As sovereign peoples, uh, my people, we wrote to the Crown. We, we took our stand. We made a unilateral declaration of independence in August of 2013. And we sent that off to the Queen and our people, the elders and the Executive Council signed that. Um, and we had elders from the four clans that exist within the ULA nation. We defined our boundary and um, we sent that off to the Queen. And of course, um, let me show you something. In, in here, all our correspondence that we've, we've sent to the Queen, yeah, and what people are not realising is that when you get into a position of power, yeah, then our people need to understand you know, the exercise of that power and how to use it. Like here's a letter, for example, that I sent to the Queen. Yeah. And this one was about when we were heading over there, when we took a delegation over in 2016. Took a delegation across to England to meet with um, people. And here you see the Queen wrote back to me from Buckingham Palace, Giller Michael Anderson, convener of the Sovereign Union, First Nations Peoples in Australia, and Head of State of the Uralian People's Republic. My address at Mogilov Station. Here we have other letters. This is from the Premier, when Baird, Premier Baird was the Prime, uh, Premier of New South Wales. My people wrote to him about a number of issues. This is dated 2016, 18th of October 2016. Here's the letter, Giller, Head of State of the Uralia People's Republic, Mogilov Station, Kaduga. Right, that's McMahon, Director, Briefing and Correspondence Unit, Prime, Premier, and, Premier and Cabinet. Here we have the Honourable Catherine Cusack, MLC, Giller, Parliamentary Secretary to the Premier, Giller, Head of State of the Uralia People's Republic, Mogla, 28th of September 2016. The Honourable Catherine Cusack, MLC, Parliamentary Secretary to the Premier. We go on. Here, Honourable Paul O'Toole, Municipal Lands and Forest Ministry, Minister for Racing. Gilla Michael Anderson, Head of State of the Uralia People's Republic, Mogla, Kuruga, 3rd of November 2017. That's about land issues within the Uralia nation. Right. And of course, here again, um, and this is uh, from Berejiklian uh, government, 2017. Premier and Cabinet, again, this is their second letter back. Gila, Head of State of the Uralia People's Republic, Kenobia. So as can be seen from this, yeah, um, we have a very important uh, now series of communications um, as a sovereign people. Yeah. And as a sovereign people, the Queen recognises us. The important thing here is that the Queen is recognised by the High Court of Australia as the head of a foreign power. England. She's the head of England. For us, yeah, she's also the Queen for each of the states and the Commonwealth of Australia. For the Uwalia people, that is a foreign power. They are foreign powers and they are occupying powers. And if you want to have a look at the occupying power status and the legality of occupying power and what they do, the only thing you have to do is look at the um, ICJ, the International Court of Justice Advisory Opinion uh, to the United Nations Security Council on the illegal occupation of um, Palestinian lands by um, Israel and you will see what they say about that in there in terms of the illegality of occupying other people's lands. There are other cases around the world as well in terms of occupation. There's the one in southern Sudan um, where the Portuguese were. Um, you only have to look at how they say um, Spain occupied the Western Sahara and what the International Court of Justice said there about the Western Sahara, particularly the Bedouin people who were the nomads um, traveling. 
and um, and they went across countries. They went across um, borders within countries, and uh, but they had a sovereign right because they had an agreement with different tri different mobs. Now, because there was an agreement with the different caliphs of different areas within there, the Bedouin had these arrangements for them to travel around within their territories. And because these territories crossed ca other countries, <coughs> then in our case, the, so the, the um, ICJ is very important. Because you see, they also talk about the illegalities of that occupation by Spain. And the fact that they had it before Spain came into existence, they had arrangements with other tribes and other, other mobs to move within that country. That was a legal arrangement, according to the ICJ. We had legal arrangements under our law and culture where we travelled across each other's country for ceremony. We did promising ceremonies. We, did, we married people through ceremony. We, we, got, we got engaged. Our whole... whole um, re religious, if you, and religious is not by definition of the of um, of the Christian faith, but the religion. When you look at the definition of religion, it's a practice. It's a things you do constantly, and thus the word religion, you, because you do it constantly, and it's a, it becomes a religious act. Yeah, and so they can def they define it in that fashion, and so we have this constant arrangement with all our tribes. And so that was an arrangement with other foreign bodies. They spoke different languages. Yeah? So when you look at Australia, we were multicultural. And we have all these different languages. But we have a religion that connects us all. And we do ceremony despite the language differences. And that's what maintained the unity and the, and the peaceful coexistence of people in Australia. Mind you, we had our, pride, we had our fights. But who didn't? But it wasn't over land. It was not over land. It was not taking other people's land. That was forbidden. So here we have, uh, we, we have now um, one mob who co where I'm now corresponding with my occupying powers of my territory and they're re responding to me with these letters and calling me a head of state. Now, legally um, and politically, um, yeah, I have diplomatic immunity under law because this here creates um, a, 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 an established body of lawmakers who are working with me, who are my elders and our executive council of state. And so there is no way a treaty can interfere with what I'm doing on my country. So if they develop a national treaty then this here bans them from including my mob in that process. And I've just been corresponding with uh, the Gladys Berejiklian government recently about the changes to the, um, or introduction of a new Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Act. And uh, I've written off to her and said that, you know, to include us without our consent is a belligerent act of war. And I've notified her of that and I've also notified her that I have sent a letter to that extent to the United Nations, to the Secretary General and the President of the General Assembly. So from this year, I'm working from a position of power now. I'm, I'm not, I am not a, um, um, a subordinate in this case here. I am now equal to them and um, the Ualia people, we will stand as equals when we talk with the governments. Uh, going forward. People need to understand now is that um, we have to get rid of all these middlemen, whether they're black or white. We have to get rid of them. And the way we get rid of them is to just notify everybody concerned that you've taken action, even if you do it by clan by clan, if it's the nation can't come together, but your mob can identify your land. Paint your country or draw it on a map. And that's your country. And then all the authorities, um, I can assist you to um, write to the authorities and say, we now have advisors, we now have consultants who are working with us to develop our nation in such a political way that we are beginning to exercise our sovereign rights under our law and custom. And 
any decision to be made on our country is to be made with us, not anybody else. Uh, so third parties, fourth parties have got absolutely nothing to do with, with the people. Um, so it's the government and the people. Um, mining companies are a third party. And so it's you, you, um, what we've done here is that we've, we've claimed all our mineral wealth and our ownership. Um, we are tolerant, our people are tolerant because we've known a lot of people and our own people. They, we have some opal mining on our country that's been going on for you know, more than 100 years. And, um, and people are not so flustered. My people are not really worried about that. We get big stories, our women don't take opal. Um, people outside of uh, who are Aboriginal people who go onto the dumps and find opal, they, they take it because it, they sell it for money, of course. It's a, it's a money-making thing. And so we, um, well, we don't take it for jewellery or costume design or anything else like that there. Um, that's not for us to do because it has something to do with the very sacred story that we have. And so in, in the scheme of things, now we are just appealing as, an, as a sovereign nation of people, knowing what can be achieved if you stand your ground and not give in to, you know, to those desires of, of want in terms of what they're offering. They'll offer you all the money in the world. They'll offer you make all sorts of promises. They say they can do it better. They say they learn from the past. They say this and that. But you'll find out that they won't let you do it yourself. They'll put someone in there to work with you. They'll want a joint venture. They'll want a joint program. They'll want a, um, some integrated um, approach. And um, the moment they do that, uh, you'll be the loser. And um, I, I just say that sovereignty is, is, is about power. That's what sovereignty is. And so you have the power under your law and culture. The High Court of Australia, after Marba, now recognises that, and so pro the issue now is you, as a people, standing up and saying, my law on this land is the law of the land. The white man's law is an imposed law by an occupying power, and so if you want to sort out whose law is the more powerful here, let's meet in a court room. Let's find out. And you see, with that, the government won't do that to you. And the reason the government, state or federal, will not do that for, to you is simply because Mabo said, when you express your sovereignty and you assert your sovereignty on your land under your law and culture, and you know your law and culture, you know your country, Mabo said that you local municipal courts cannot deal with those issues. They are barred from dealing with what sovereignty has superior power. They're barred from it. And so this belongs to another jurisdiction. Right? Now that's in Marba. So if you're asserting your law over your territory and you've got the power to do it and the will to do it with your people and they stand by you, they can't do anything on your land. Yeah. And so you can contest that. You can contest that. And what you do is that then you can say that this state does not have the power to authorize mining tenements on my country without my approval. And my approval, when I talk about my, I'm talking about the people who belong to that land. Yeah. And so you need to have honorable, powerful people who will stand their ground and say, you don't belong to this country, I don't care what organisation bringing you in on the outside, you mining company, you might be paying us sit down money and all that sort of stuff, and sit down and listen to you and talk to you, but you've got no power here, we're going to bring in our specialist, because we don't know enough, we're going to tell you what we want. And you have that authority, that's exercising sovereign power, which you have under your law and culture.